Hello there. Can you win the war with just armored cars? That's the question I want to tackle today. Arms Against Tyranny is here and it adds a lot, but it also makes Sweden kinda OP when going monarchist. So I wanted to add a little extra challenge. Sweden gets a unique bonus when completing this focus, which makes armored cars potentially viable as their only unit. So I wanted to find out for myself. It's Arms Against Tyranny. We're here. Let's do it. It's me. We're going to keep historical focuses off and we're going to spice into Iron Man mode. Armored car. Choo choo. I don't know why I said choo choo. They're not trains. We've got all kinds of problems. We have Fort Comet here, which makes military factors very difficult. And we also get higher stability, but no war support. Hungerschuld, where we will riot if we get lower than 65% stability, which is very bad. And we can't get rid of it until we hit 40 civvies. So we very much do want to be going up some civvies. My goal is to never dip below 65% stability. And also, we get the Lynx Armored Car for free, which gives increased attack and movement in forests and snow. This makes armored cars viable, quote unquote. I will be making armored car only armies. I won't be doing that until I have Lynx armored cars because I still need certain divisions for a couple focuses and I may have to fight before that point. So I'll still recruit regular soldiers in the meantime, for example, these guys, which actually are surprisingly good. As many divisions as we physically can. So we need to be thinking about monarchism. That's all the way down here and we need to get meet the king and king and council. This requires 40% support. We can pretty much rush this almost all the way, but the only thing is we do need 10% war support from to do old enemy stirs. I have to go down one of these focuses, seize Landsvek, which changes the Folkemet to give me more war support. That will put my stability below 65 though, so I need to get stability first. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with defensive act and go urbanization and then this, and then we're gonna move west and then east, and then we're gonna grind down towards monarchism. Let's do it. And we need quite a lot of civilian factories, so we will build a fair amount at the start. One really incredible thing of Sweden is they have moved a lot of resources into Sweden. There is a ton of tungsten and steel. I am going to need to build refineries for rubber and oil, though. Okay, Germany is going historical. That's interesting. It's remilitarization of the Rhineland. That means I only have till 1940 before Germany attacks me. Awesome. One of the main reasons why I'm doing this stupid idea is because of Scania Vabis, which has a specialized armored car standardized production bonus, which is an armored defense and production cost. And then all of their bonuses are tailored specifically to armored cars. This is the one I want. Standardized components giving 15% production resource need, meaning I don't need as much rubber, and efficiency gain. Plus, more speed, efficiency cap, cost, armor, soft attack. It's crazy. Got an election. We're just going to keep Axel. He's got a bit of a weird face. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, dude. You look a little weird. All right, first guy, we can get Ernst Vig Forest, which because he gets 15% consumer goods, and we can keep him when we change to non-aligned. That gave us one more factory. Wow, thanks. All right, there it is. We have some factories, but more importantly, we've got 13% war support. <laughs> we've only got 67 stability, but we can go old enemy stirs, which thankfully will move us down the route of beautifully becoming monarchist. All right, we got some 70% stability. Let's get red dictatorship because then we're just going to beeline down towards the, the absolute glory. Monarchism. Oh, I hadn't even realized. I, ha I can promote urbanization. Oh, and I was just about to say, I don't have any factory slots. I can promote urbanization, get more building slots. A perfect use for my PP. Oh, that'll be amazing. But more importantly, we can grab partial mobilization. Barely gave me any factories. That was not worth it. Damn it. Oh, baby, World War II is going to be super early. It's a little on taunt. That's great. But we're going to meet with the king. And in the meantime, we can actually appeal for support. Just gives us flat non-aligned support. Then we do have to pay them back later within three years, within two years, sorry. Thing is, two of them are good, two of them are bad. The military and rural folk ones are objectively good. We're having a little fika with the king. And the big value of this is that we can now start to send him on royal visits. Look at this though, rural support swells, change of popularity if not aligned, 10%. That is so good. And we now do have enough support for Hogum. Oh boy, a Soviet Union civil war. I thought it was me, but nope, it is a Trotsky civil war. Fantastic. Okay, so we are now getting strikes. We have 132 days, but it doesn't matter because we are about to go king in council. This will immediately 
put us to non-aligned, which will fix all of our stability problems because so much of it is coming from low party popularity. And in fact, it will actually double. The Germans want my resources. They want to steal all the resources in Vastabolten, which is 49 tungsten, 55 steel, and 21 chromium. I'm saying, no, Swedish steel is for Sweden. Welcome to the Kingdom of Sweden with King Gustav V. Oh, we get manpower just for having King Gustav V. It's fantastic. Yes. I've actually got spare artillery. Let's sell some equipment. Sell 400 of our equipment right now. Price high. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. They're willing to pay. Brazil will do it. And now Mexico's paying the rest. You can just charge what you want. Oh, fantastic. Thank you very much. Right. But I can't go any further until I hit 40% war support. So we need to be going down that and hitting war support like crazy. Okay, here we go. I've just figured it out. I know what I'm doing. When this is done, I get 5% more war support. When I do this, I get 10%. That's 15%. I just have to have 115 political, 100 political power. I got 22, so that'll be 37%, right? But then I can do defense above all, and that gives me 5%. I'll be there. I might get one strike, but that's totally fine. I think I can probably fix it by beefing up my stability. Trotsky has won. Oh boy. Please don't hurt me, Mr. Trotsky man. Now we can rush down this route. We gotta decide which ones do we want. Sadly, my scramble for the Baltics will not work very well because so many of them have exploded out and have joined communism. We're gonna go Norway. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to Norway Crisis, and then we're going to the United Kingdoms, and we're just going to pop it. And that's going to give us the strength to do all the others. And we're just going to grind straight down for annexations. All the while, rushing, rushing, trying to get enough stability to get away from strikes. Oh my god, it's World War II. Okay, so the Sudeten Crisis has just fired. Czechoslovakia formed the Czech Entente, which has Yugoslavia and France in it. That is not looking like a good war, Germany. Oh my god. They'll go around managing though, but they're gonna have to fight Czechs, the Yugos, and the Czechs will survive because they've got the Sudensen land. Norway caves! Okay. Okay, now we're just gonna go straight to the United Kingdom of Sweden and Norway, please. It worked. Okay, I didn't even get an event, but Norway has accepted my puppet. This gives me 44 factories. Does that turn it off? Yes! Invalid ID removed! No more strikes! We have just won everything. That is fantastic. Now we just have to build as many military factories as we can, while we also grind quickly towards Finland. So worry is I'm not going to be able to build armored cars for several years, because I have to do... This is two lots, 140, 280, plus 35, 300, and 385. It's going to be a year before I have taken all of Scandinavia. God damn it. And then I have to wait another year to be able to do the armored cars. I am now going to begin building armored cars. They are the only the interwar version, which is lame as hell. But I think we're going to want to try and grab at least some. It is going to also give experience to my armored car guys. So we do want to do that. Finland agreed. Let's go. Let's grab the Finland puppet. Actually, no, we should start doing the decisions to integrate Swedish Norway instead. That's what we gotta do because I need to be annexing. Do armored cars not cost rubber? Armored cars do not cost rubber. Oh my god. I assumed they cost rubber. I have been rushing refineries. Oh, I should have been building them two years ago. What the hell are their tires made of? They're cars. Surely they have tires. <laughs> there it is. Dead sh De mm, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that. Detschnordiskariket. But that's my country's name. With 120 political power, after one year, I can integrate them and annex them. That's pretty good. And whoa, you get incredible bonuses if you have the Swedish Empire. Okay, we're on a time limit. They've just claimed Memo, which means they are doing a certain Eastern claim, so they will indeed do Danzig or War. I was worried they wouldn't, but they will now do Down Sickle War, which means they will be able to do Operation Vesseberg very soon. I need to rush, absolutely rush for Denmark then. Oh boy, the world's ending. The Mexican Socialist Republic has declared war in the UK. Oh my god, I instantly got Finland as a puppet. Yes, that's so good. But I've got to rush down Denmark for Danish alignment. They refuse to give up Bornholm. What? No! <gasps> They're the leader of their own faction. All right, we're going to attack and we're just going to try to rush Denmark. Oh, they've got defense. Oh, boy. We've got a port. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Denmark will fall. Okay, I can't do any naval invasions here because I don't have control of this sea zone. So we're going to invade the west coast instead. Let's just see how that goes. Son of a biscuit. Oh my god, I have never seen this in non-historical. Napoleon the Sixth has occurred. That's a fantastic. It's Napoleon France. We're also doing lots of naval invasions to Denmark and we're trying to bait them into Sweden. Let's see if it works. Damn, that took such a long time. Now we can just focus on integrating Denmark. We can also do Iceland, but I'm going to leave that for now. And that's it. Every other part of Scandinavia is ours. So now we can simply rush our armored cars and then convert our entire army to armored cars. It's going to be great. I've just realized I actually don't have to click Integrate Kingdom of Denmark because Integrate Kingdom of Denmark just gives me cores after 120 days. Or I could just click Restore Kalmar Union, which instantly gives me cores as long as I own Norway. So as soon as Norway is annexed, we win. Also, we're finally starting to get some points on Scania Vebis. And the one I want to be rushing down towards is production efficiency cap, but also armor and heart attack, because that's going to be OP as hell. What is going on? The French Empire just declared war in Belgium. They have a, they've got Napoleon. Yeah, of course. Right. So France is currently fighting Germany, but also they've attacked Belgium. They are going around the Maginot line, their own Maginot. Okay, well, it looks like I'll be taking Poland as well. They've just joined the, uh, the Fourth International. That's going to be fun. I can't wait to have to fight the Soviets. Okay, well, Germany wins the war because France has been destroyed. They attacked Belgium. Britain has naval invaded in Bordeaux. And Belgium's just galloped in and is about to take Paris. France, what are you doing? They call Maginot. You started the war. Now Germany is just going to instantly win. Okay. Link's armored car has been completed. I am so freaking ready. 65 hardness, 16 breakthrough, 13 soft attack, max speed of 12. Oh, the max speed of the Landsverk was only 9. So that means all of the armored cars I'd already built are useless. Here it is, the M39 Lynx. We just got one point in each of them. That seems pretty smart. Now to make the division. I have just realized that armored car divisions do not use infantry equipment. That is crazy. All right, well, we're going to have to... This is it. This is the beginning. We got our cars division. But what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make it so you're not allowed to use any interwar armored cars. We can only use these bad boys because I want my speed to be 12 kilometers an hour. Okay, since I don't need infantry equipment, um, I think we just start putting all the factories into armored cars. Like, literally, I will keep one factory going. Let's go. Let's just make an infinite amount. Why not? Now we can begin to integrate Finland. It'll, it'll take a year. But that's fine, because that's basically when we're planning to invade. That'll be awesome. That's a peace conference right there. Germany just took 54 states because the French capitulated. Oh my god. God. So they've annexed Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, and Romania. God, look at that. Here's the final template for the cars. We've got to give it some, some anti-air, some towed artillery. And, a, of course, another armored car recon company, which gives a lot of bonuses, including movement speed. Look at that. Zoom in that crap. Snow, 20% attack, 20% movement. Oh my god, we're going to destroy the Russians. Let's go. All right, we have annexed Norway. Which means, hello, Kalmar Union. Bam. Cores on everything. The trade I've been waiting for. Production efficiency gain and production resource need. Suddenly making so many more armored cars. Oh my god. Poland just declared war on Germany. I now need, may need to rush the Soviets. Because they may they'll completely die to the Germans. Poland, why? The Soviets are probably not even ready at all. Let's try to rush down for Crusade against Bolshevism as quick as we can now. Ooh, okay. The Italian Union just joined the Fourth International. So this would become Poland, the Soviet Union, and Italy against Germany. That I can get behind. That That is a lot of armored cars that I am down. That is not good. It's because I'm trying to build a lot of armored cars. I am trying to recruit 51 of them. This entire line of research does not give anything for armored cars. Literally nothing. So there is no point me <laughs> researching it. I've just realized that I have two separate national spirits that hurt my PP game. King Gustav's spirit, which is former autocrat, minus 10. And then his ardent conservative, minus 10. I don't think I should have both. We have to start the war as soon as possible. Like, how soon are they going to die? Okay, they actually are still pretty good. And if I can get the next focus, I can get claims and maybe I can take some territory. Okay, I'm starting the war. I just realized I need to be training. Let's go. Look at this. 
Germany is now fighting, because they've attacked Switzerland, they're now fighting the Allies. So they have to defend Belgium and Luxembourg. Like, oh, wait, this is perfect. They're being hit on all sides. They're going to have to divert thousands of troops to the west. This is going to slow down their assault. Hell yeah. Okay, there it is. We are now fighting the Soviet Union. We've also been invited to join the Axis. I do not want to do that because I do not want to have to fight the Allies. So no thank you. Okay, the first attacks have done okay. But we do not have a lot of soft attack. And the reason is because of low experience, low supply, and the fact that our divisions are such small combat width. You know, we're okay. The lack of HP is a problem, but we can build a lot. We're also very fast, so we're zooming around. Problem is that the Estonians are pushing in. They're pretty close to capitulation, so we're going to need to rush the east and try to take as much territory as we can. Now that we've got the claims from reclaiming the Rus, this should mean we can hold on to a lot of the territory. It looks like they're completely collapsing now, so we just have to sort of pull back because we're caught by this horrible river. We're just going to try and rush and take as much territory as possible. But the thing is, Germany's about to explode because the Allies are here. So if they die and then Hungary dies, Russia should push back west. And then once Hungary dies, we'll capitulate Russia, get it all. We can also start to get the improved armored car. I don't know what exactly that's going to do for us, but hey, we're going to get it. Biggest advantage, I can just drive around them. As long as I can get into some planes, I just choo-choo through them. This is brilliant. We are finally in surplus of armored cars. Oh god, the Japanese just joined the Axis. Why? Okay. Didn't even get a notification whatsoever, but Germany has capitulated. And this means that Italy has instantly retaken all of the south don't like that that's a weird europe that's a weird europe but it does mean that the soviets have regained all their territory so i think we'll wait for them to get defeated by estonia and then we can rush them again from the north and maybe we can take all this back the absolute huge advantage here is the fact that my cars just zoom down their highways this is ridiculous i am just going vroom vroom over the entirety of the russian steps I don't do a lot of damage, though, I'm going to be honest. But if I get a lot of them together, they do slap. Oh my god, I've got no connection of railways. What am I doing? Ah. Mm. Okay, so the Estonian people probably just collapsed, uh, meaning all of this is now back. Uh-oh. We got to rush down all of this. That's very bad. Uh, let's... Oh, I'm panicking. I'm panicking. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I've sent three guys here, but they've already rushed to Petrograd, so I don't know what to do there. I've sent boys here, and we're just trying to take as much of the territory as possible. We might now be in a situation where all we have to do is just try to cap them before their forces hit us. Otherwise, we're in big trouble. <laughs> These guys over here have literally no powers at all. We're just, we have such a deficit. This is terrible. All right, we're just we're just barreling. We're just going straight through. There's a lot of random divisions everywhere, but we're actually doing okay somewhat. There is a bit of assaults here and there, but I'm trying to just push as fast as possible to try to capitulate them. Basically, all the divisions are somewhere else. We're just galloping across. Problem is, the moment I run into anybody, we lose all. We just die because we have like no equipment. We have almost nothing. This is hell. I think I can actually win this if I just sort of rush them down. All I have to do is just actually move and do it quickly. <sighs> okay, it's over. I've beaten back the Soviets. Look how little equipment they had. That is crazy. Oh my god. All right. It is 1943. I am not sure if you've noticed, but look at my divisional count. This is all I'm down to. This is it. They are extremely under-equipped. If you're not aware, when divisions get so weak, if they attack, they can actually be deleted during attacking. That's what's happened. I've lost dozens of divisions. I have lost half a million manpower. If I want to keep going, I'd have to push through the Commonwealth and then capitulate the Socialist Republic of Italy. I am not going to do that. I will die. I will not achieve that goal. So I am calling it. In his 1943, I am 4k in deficit with armored cars, and that's only because I've lost half of my division so they're not asking for cars it's it's hard if i if i had just played a regular game of sweden this would have been super great i would have built some amazing tanks i'd have super heavies maybe by now i would have them all over the place i would be doing really really well sweden is a powerhouse this was just a terrible idea do i recommend armored cars no please do not play armored car only it's bad. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for lots more horde challenges like this at 20k subs. I do indeed have a lovely war conquest planned. 
I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.